Hello everyone, Pastor Bob here with you on another Wednesday Bible study as we are in the book of Romans chapter 5 this week. We've already covered the first four chapters, so if you want to get your Bibles, and uh, we'll start in Romans chapter 5 here in a moment. I want to tell you about some things going on over at church uh, this weekend. Saturday night we will be showing the movie War Room. You know, as a pastor... Uh, sometimes it gets a little bit irritating. I don't know why, but when people find out you're a pastor, they think you know something or they think you have all the answers. <clears throat> I don't. I try to tell them I don't. But what I can do is show them in the word of God what they need to do to correct the problems that we have. And we all have problems. But one of the things that they come to me constantly is about marriage issues. Well, if you know my past, uh, marriage is something that I've struggle with uh, before i knew the answers but i didn't want to make a change so this movie that we're showing here saturday night has a lot to do with marriage uh, it has a lot to do with prayer and that's why it's called war room we are in a war uh, not only with uh, the world but within ourselves and uh, doing the right things and trying to follow god because old satan wants to destroy our families our churches and and what not so uh you know the definition of stupid they say is uh doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result uh, i know a lot of people whose marriages are not what they could be or what they should be and then they come to me and they start talking to me about it and so i show them in the word of god how a man should love a woman and and love her as christ loved the church and how a woman should respect her husband and they don't take that advice uh, they want to do things their own way and just hoping that the problems will just go away on their own and they never do uh, well this movie that we'll be showing saturday night uh, shows one of the things that it takes to restore your marriage to what god wants it to be and that is prayer it's a powerful movie i urge you to come over it starts at six o'clock uh, this saturday at beaver run church of the brethren if you don't know how to get there, text me. I'll, I'll show you. It's there in Burlington on Beaver Run Road. Six o'clock, we will be having popcorn, uh, nachos, drinks, uh, snacks, and just come over for a good fellowship. No, I'm not going to be preaching to you, so don't worry about that. We're just going to get together, a little bit of fellowship, and have a good time and watch a movie. On Sunday night, we're going to start the Chosen series. Uh, I'm watching this. Well, my third go around as I've been watching this, it is a great way to bring yourself in a closer relationship to Jesus Christ. It's going to bring up a whole lot of points, a whole lot of things that you may have never thought about. And what it does is it will raise questions. And that is good because when it raises questions, it starts a discussion. So this will be an open uh, series that we'll be sitting there. We'll be talking about it after the, we show the clip. It'll also start at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. I don't know how long we'll be, but I guarantee you we'll be out by 8. Um, so the movie usually lasts between, oh, a half hour and 45 minutes. And then we'll have a little discussion and then we'll dismiss. Uh, it'll be very good. So I hope you come over for that. So um, we'll be in Romans, like I said, chapter, uh, what did I say, 5. And so... I hope a lot of people are, are watching this and this is making some kind of an impact. I guess you don't have the gas to go anywhere. Um, isn't that awful? What's going on are gas pumps. Uh, as I'm speaking, I just came back from town a while ago. Gas is at 419. Uh, it's just a shame. And you and I both know there is absolutely no reason for this whatsoever. We are in a country right now that wants to just keep you quiet they want you to stay home and they want you to shut up and the reason i know this is because two years ago uh, i was in florida and that was when the gas prices were cheap uh, the economy was great uh, we had someone in office that loved our country and loved us and loved christianity and then we decided hey we're going to want something better and then come along this coronavirus and what did they do? They told you to go home and put a mask on and don't go anywhere. 
And so we lived like that for about a year. And then things started to get a little better. And so I go back to Florida again last year. And then here comes Omicron. And so again, they want you to put a mask on, go home, shut your mouth. And then this year, all of a sudden, I'm back in Florida again. And it looks like the coronavirus is going to go away. Things are starting to slow down a little bit. And then they have the uh, Daytona 500 down there, 150,000 people without masks. Uh, they had the Super Bowl down in Florida, no masks. And you think, okay, we're coming out of this thing. And then what happens? Russia invades Ukraine. So what do they want you to do? Well, you can't buy gas. You can't go anywhere. So again, they want you to go home, shut your mouth, and agree with what's going on. So that is the first step to uh, the step of trying to get everyone just to shut up and comply. And you and I both know this is all by not coincidence. This is intentional. I believe with all my heart. There's no reason for the gas prices to be what they are right now. You know it. I know it. We never had this problem before so-and-so took over. But we're going to have to live with it. And as Christians, they want us to sit down and they want us to shut up and they want us to comply. But it's time that Christians stand up. The Bible says to go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We need to get back to going out and reaching people for Jesus Christ. People need to get a backbone and start going out, telling people about Christ. People need to get back in church. And we need to get Christ back in uh, the forefront of our uh, community and our lives. So, guess I got on a little pedestal there for a moment. I apologize, but it just irritates me to see how far that we have fallen away from Christ. And we're getting exactly what we deserve. Well, now I'll take that back. Lord just corrected me. We're not getting what we deserve. If we got what we deserved, we'd all be headed to hell. But God is patient and he's loving and he's kind. He wants us to come back and we need a revival in this country. That's enough of that. All right. Romans chapter five. For the first four chapters, Paul has been just hammering us on faith. Grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, it's not based on going to heaven. It's not based on what you do. It's based on who you know. And your belief in Jesus Christ is what will get you to heaven. So he just got done giving us the uh, example of Abraham, who was not proved righteous by what he did. He was proved righteous by his belief. And so for the first four chapters, he's Paul's really been pushing that on us. So then he takes off on... Romans chapter 5. And it's, here's what it says. Let's pray before we get started. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit convicts all of us and lets what we're saying here today sink in. Uh, Lord, we are saved by our belief in you. Grace through faith, Father. Uh, a belief that changes who we are on the inside, Father. It, it's not based on our works. It's not based on how good we are. It's based on what you did at the cross. So Father, help us to really realize that. And in the faith that we say we have in our hearts, let it be shown by our proofs of works after we know that we know you as Savior. So Father, be with us this day as we get into the book of Romans and we we'll give you praise in Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, going back to verse 4 or chapter 4. Therefore, since we have been justified, made righteous through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. <clears throat> There's nothing better than to know that you have peace with Jesus Christ, not based on what you've done or what you're doing, not based on how good you are, but based on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And all we have to do is believe 
because we are justified through that faith, believing that Jesus took my sin upon the cross, it was nailed to a tree, that he gave his life for us. His shed blood is what makes us righteous. But in order to have that, you got to receive it. So that's what he's talking about here. It says, through whom we have gained access by faith unto this grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now that hope, we've talked about it before, that hope is something that we can be certain of. So don't let anyone come and tell you that when you fail or when you make a mistake, well, the Lord, oh, you're not real. Stop it. Stop it. You'll never be perfect in this life. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. So when you fail, and you do, and I do every day, God the Father looks at the Son, and the Son says, whoa, I paid for that. That's, our, that's my child. I paid with that with my own body. And so they are justified through faith, through Jesus Christ's blood. And that is something that we've got to grasp in our, in our minds. It says, not only so, verse 3, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Well, that'll set you back, won't it? How many of you rejoice when, when you're going through a hard time or when you're going through a medical issue or your family's not what it should be? It's hard to rejoice in your suffering. But there's something about suffering and Christianity that goes together. Jesus Christ is our He's our role model. He's our father. And our goal is to be like him. If you want to be like Jesus Christ, you will suffer in this life. That's just a fact. The Bible even tells us in other places, in this life, you will have many problems. That's a promise from God. You don't have to be on this earth very long to realize, yep, we have a lot of problems and a lot of suffering. But that suffering does something that he's going to tell us right now. We rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. In other words, you just keep on going no matter what. It makes you tougher. Perseverance produces character. It'll turn you into who you are. In character, hope. Hope is something that's guaranteed. We just talked about that. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given you. All believers receive the Holy Spirit when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, comes to live and takes us dwelling up inside our hearts so that when you struggle you have that confidence that he's there with you all the time so we can have access to the father anytime we want 24 hours a day seven days a week jesus christ is on call and that ought to make us happy on the inside sometimes we kind of forget that that we have the holy spirit living inside of us just it's amazing when you stop and you really let that sink into us. It says in verse 6, you see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Think about that for a minute. Jesus Christ died even for the people, for the soldiers that was nailing on the cross. Verse 7 says, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's a scripture you can set and you can just think about all day long. That relationship that Jesus wants us to have is based on the fact 
that while I was still a sinner, while I was still unsaved, he died for me. You know, if I was walking down the street and I seen a car coming at an intersection, and let's just say there was some older lady or an older man crossing the street that I didn't know. I might I might go out and push him out of the way and let the car run over me. I might. I might. But here's what I won't do. I won't take my son or my grandson and push him in front of that car to save that person. I just won't. That's what God the Father did for us. He sacrificed his own son for you and for me. And that, when you think about that, it'll blow you away. That kind of love is something that I can't quite, quite comprehend. Because Christ even died for the Hitler and for the Putin. He even died for them. And all he wants those people to do is turn, repent of their sin, and accept him as personal Lord and Savior. And that goes for everyone that's alive on the face of this earth. And I just picked out a couple of people that, you know, are pretty, pretty rough. But you know what? It isn't that their bad stuff is what sent them to hell. It's their refusal to believe and the Son of God that's going to send them to hell. And it's what's going to send some of us to hell as well by not believing in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the kind of belief that we got to have if we're going to make it. Verse 9 says, verse 9 says, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We don't have to worry about, ever, have to worry about punishment of hell falling on us because we know Jesus Christ. For if when we were God's enemies, and by the way, that's what you are if you don't know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. For if we were God, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? In other words, we've been brought back to the fellowship that we should have through the saving, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. We've been reconciled. We've been brought back to the point of where we can have intimate relationship with the Savior that was lost in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned. It says that the veil of the temple in the Old Testament that they used to have to go around and set up all the time, that the only people could go in there was the high priest. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, that veil was torn from top to bottom, which give us gives us free access to the Father, through the Son, Jesus Christ. We no longer have to go to a Catholic priest. We no longer have to go to someone to pray for us. We have Jesus Christ who intercedes for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week on our behalf. And all you got to do to receive that is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And I pray that all of you out there listening to my voice have done that now that belief if it's a genuine belief produces something in you that should come pouring out and that is works the bible calls it fruits of the spirit there should be something an outward showing you should have a desire to go to church you should have a desire to tell other people about jesus christ you should have a desire not to sin willfully 
And when you do, you have the Holy Spirit living, living inside of you that convicts you of sin. Those are just some of the marks of a Christian who has really believed Jesus Christ and accepted him as personal Lord and Savior. Okay, we're going to stop there. Next week, we'll pick up on chapter 5, verse 12. Listen, make sure you're saved today. If you're not sure, just ask Jesus Christ right now, wherever you're sitting, say, Lord, I'm not so sure that I know you as my Lord and Savior. Right now, I ask you to come into my heart and save me, Lord. I repent of my sins the best I can, and I accept you into my heart. Come and save me, Lord Jesus. And that's pretty much all there is to salvation. It's not by baptism. It's not by going to church. It's not by giving the church money. It's not by doing good things. You can just throw all that stuff away. And how do I know that? Well, thief on the cross didn't do none of it. He wasn't baptized. He didn't even get to get on his knees and pray. He didn't take communion. He didn't go to church. He didn't do nothing. He just said, Lord, remember me when you come under your kingdom. And Jesus looked at him on the, on the cross and he said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. It just takes genuine belief. Okay. Hope to see you all this weekend. In the meantime, we've got some people on our prayer list that are in dire need of prayer. Uh, just came across yesterday. Good friend of ours, a good friend of the family, Ben Fout. Uh, they did a catheter on him. Catheter. No, catheter. Where they run the thing through your veins. Whatever it's called. Anyway, they found a whole bunch of blockages. And uh, I went to see Ben today. Went over Rusty's to do my tax. And here come Ben driving out. So he's supposed to be still. He's not supposed to do anything. But I don't know where he was going. Maybe he's going to the doctor's office. I don't know. But um, they're going to have to make a decision what to do about these blockages that Ben has. So remember Ben Fout, if you would. I uh, found out at church the other day that RJ and Donna Staggs are not feeling the best. They're a little under the weather. So we're praying that they start feeling better soon. Jason Charleston uh, has been having some issues with uh, his kidneys. He needs your prayers as well. Reverend Gary Gordon has a mass in his stomach. So it's a big old mass. And they're going to have to do something with him. So just remember Reverend Gary Gordon. Uh, Mary Kay Parker has a broken hip. She's down here at PVH. I, I got to go see her yesterday. Sweet lady. Sweet lady. But she's doing well. She's just going to be in the hospital while recovering. Larry Taylor with his house fire. Uh, they're finally getting things back in order. They're staying at the Parsonage beside the Fountain United Brother Church. Uh, there is a GoFundMe page on Facebook if you want to help them out. And that is for the family of Larry Taylor. Ernie Keller uh, has been in the hospital with AFib. Good news is they shocked him. They got his heart back in rhythm. He took about 30 pounds of fluid out of Ernie. And he is back. His heart's beating normal as it can be for Ernie. And he should be heading home today. So remember them. Then remember our uh, normal prayers for like... Uh, buddy dayton who i have good news with him uh, the cancer the mass in his throat has shrunk it's gone and now he's just trying to work the muscles back to where he can swallow again and he's starting to uh, eat some soft food which is a great great thing it's a miracle so just continue to pray for buddy and uh, linda dayton please um, Dallas Adams is still in a nursing home recovering from a heart attack praying that he gets his strength back so he can go home uh, of course Ukraine what's going on over in Russia is just a horrible thing pray for those people in Ukraine that are just scared to go to bed at night because they don't know if they're going to wake up tomorrow morning they don't know if they're going to be shelled they don't know what's going to happen they're trying to get out, but Russia's blocking the escape routes, and they are hitting uh, rural areas, and they're killing a lot of innocent people. Pray for Putin, too. Pray that he changes who he is and accepts Christ. 
that can that can change everything uh, let me see who else I got on here of course Dan Beiser uh, Eileen Beatty people that are still battling cancer that need your prayers uh, the list goes on and on Matt Hawk uh, he got the results back so I was supposed to get him back yesterday I haven't heard whether it is cancer or not I'm praying that they let me know soon uh, whether he is going to be battling cancer or what so we got a lot of them. Lou in Florida my old buddy and Lou prostate cancer that's going through the radiation and the chemo and I could go on Dana Spicer cancer she stage four needs your prayer great woman of God Dana if you hear her talk the faith that that woman has that's the faith that we're all shooting for Dana knows that her life is short but boy is she positive it just gives me a warm feeling and gratitude of Jesus that she knows that Lord is her Savior and she knows she's going to see her Savior face to face very soon uh, be with Dana be with George Tasker battling cancer um, I know I'm forgetting people that's the bad thing when you start reading off your list you always forget people but listen it's everywhere people are hurting the answer is Jesus Jesus has always been the answer he always will be the answer I pray we all know that with that let's pray and I hope to see you all this Saturday night and Sunday night Sunday morning if you want to come over to church be awesome love to have you God you've heard all these ones that we've prayed for on the prayer list so many hurting people all over Lord, people who at one time were struggling to make ends meet, they were concerned about how much money was in their bank account. We all do that. And now these people, some of them, uh, are on their last journey of life. And now all that stuff that they did and the money that they saved all those years doesn't seem to me mean as much right now. Because they're realizing just how precious life is. Lord, may we all realize that the life you give us each day is a precious gift that, we've, that we have from God. May we all realize that you've given us all a gift. And your desire for all of us is to have a relationship with you. To accept you. To believe in you. It's all you want. is simple belief that produces fruit that produces works in our lives god thank you for what you did on the cross for what you're doing lord be with us be with our country be with the people of ukraine we pray lord help us to repent we need a revival lord but before we need to re before the revival we all need to repent of our sins and we need to come back to you Father, be with us as a nation. Convict us, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your patience of putting up with us for so long. So, Lord, be with us this day. We thank you just for who you are. And we can look to you and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. So we thank you just for who you are. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Hope to see you Saturday night. If you don't know where our church is, come over. It's 1774 Beaver Run Road if I helped you on your GPS. But uh, I don't know how good GPS works back over there in the country. But you can't miss us. If you don't know how to get there, I'm sure you can find out. Give me a text. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. We'll get you there. God bless. Until I see you again, keep looking towards the prize. God bless.